Dr. Tom Roselle live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Roselle Live. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. I'm live in studio on this kind of dreary and foggy and overcast Washington day. But you know what? The sunshine's in your heart, so make it all good. 888-630-9625. 888-630-WMAL. That's how you talk to me. And guess what? If you've had a problem, let's put the fire out on it. Let's see what we can do to make life different for you. You've tried. You've applied. Come up with the same old, same old. Not, not a whole lot of anything that worked well. This is an opportunity to see if you can do something. Something differently. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. If you'd like to re-listen to this program or any program on Dr. Tom Roselle Live, you can go to RoselleRadio.com, and they're all keyed up there for your listening pleasure. We'd love to have you peruse through it, and also follow us always on Facebook. If you'd like to get a hold of one of my staff members or get a message to me, go to RoselleCare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. Send me a note. Love to talk to you and see if I can get a little information and data back to you that might make a difference, get you in the right direction. If you're outside the area, and you know, like I understand many of you are listening even as far away as Dallas, Texas, and into Hawaii and so forth. Well, thank you very much for listening. But all you need to do is let me know, and I'll get somebody who does our work in your area. So we're here at triple eight six three zero nine six two five. Have you ever set a goal or many goals? Well, I do it all the time. I put goals together, and I revisit them on a quarterly basis, annual basis, and I put them out there a year from now, six months from now, five years from now, ten years from now, and I got. 20 and 30 year goals and I put them down and I say check them and they have to be congruent with what my passion what my mission my identity is if you will in life and over the years even some of the things that many would consider far-fetched happen well I have all these things from you know silly things like flying an airplane and I have my license and working on instrumentation and so forth and the things that I like to do athletically and I've kept myself physically the place that I've always wanted to be and I've you know people who I've wanted to meet and teams I've wanted to work with you know for years ago with the Redskins when Gibbs was first in town and you know with the the Washington Mystics and some very elite uh, Olympians and so forth and one of my goals years ago is uh, kind of interesting. It's, it's one that I wanted to go to. The I wanted to go to Asia, particularly China. I wanted to go study in Asia. I just don't want to go as a tourist. I wanted to go and I wanted to spend some time to study there. I wanted to study acupuncture and herbs and so forth. So, you know, the years go by, and this was a goal that I had maybe 20 years ago. Well, guess what happened? I have just been invited to participate in an international integrative care conference that is going to be held in Shanghai and Beijing, and I get to do that in May. See, things come true. All you got to do is focus on them. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going with some phenomenal people. The American Society of Acupuncture uh, has invited me along with several other doctors, and we're going to be doing that uh, come May. I'm excited, as you can possibly stand me for you know this point on. But anyway, uh, let's talk about your stuff. That was my stuff. There's a lot of things out in the news, and I want you to be aware of them. And we're going to talk about several of them. Some, some things are old, and they're revisited, and we're going to talk about something that's very old, and something that many people say that affects up to 80% of the American population, and from mild symptoms to very, very severe symptoms. And we're talking about things like, you know, just itchy ears and uh, itchy armpits and skin and so forth. But sometimes it goes to muscular aches and swelling in the joint spaces and numbness and tingling and burning. And sometimes even paralysis where you can't even move the muscle. Sometimes your gut doesn't work. Your gastrointestinal system, bloating and pain and, and diarrhea and, you know, flatulence. You know, get around a little kid or a dog that's eating the wrong things and you clear the room, right? Headaches. They can be just dull. They can be brain fog, an inability to concentrate. You just can't get it together. And, you know, sometimes, ladies, you're going to have problems with uh, your menstrual periods and guys' prostate problems and impotency and infections of the, of the genital urinary tract and breathing. And it goes on in depression. What, what am I talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is a condition that has many presentations and it's the common symptoms. All those things are common symptoms, and they get worse and better of something called mold, fungus, yeast, candida. It's uh, it's something that is one of the most difficult things to treat, 
And, you know, if you look it up in the, the medical uh, dictionaries and books and you Google it on size, it says that, you know, the Candida yeast syndrome, you know, is uh, one of these hard to treat illnesses that present in many, many different types of things. And it's a silent epidemic and it's wrecking havoc among many, many people. So why is it so hard to treat? Well, if you go to your physician, he's going to give you these really nasty drugs that have tremendous potential of damaging the liver. If, uh, you know, you say, well, all I have to do is eliminate some of the things that feed it. The problem with mold and yeast, and, you know, this, uh, the, the study goes back years. If you go back into the textbooks and you really check this out, you're going to find that it's been written about, <clears throat> it's been written about in one sense or the other forever. And, you know, this malady, this mysterious behind-the-door type of thing, uh, there's, when I first went, it was in school in the early 70s, and we were studying about the different things. Tr- traditional medicine thought that mold and candida and fungus problems were strictly a female problem. Ladies, you ended up with yeast infections. And they gave you, you know, whatever they were going to give you locally to try to get rid of the yeast infection and, and get under control. And many of you suffered when you were pregnant. They got worse because your progesterone levels were so high. And you noticed that if you did certain things that it would get uh, problematic as well. Well, God Guys, you know, showed up with it because they have uh, something called jock itch, and that's a mold, that's a fungus, or athlete's toe, or you get these red rings around your armpits or underneath, you know, any of the, the deep embedded tissue. And it's true that in uh, moist areas of the body, mold and fungus grow rapidly. So the problem is, is not just the local itching and burning and scratching and discoloration and eczema and psoriasis that it can cause, by the way. It has to do with what really happens inside. And you have to really understand the metabolic playing field. This is one of those conditions that really is about the terrain the body itself, the susceptibility, if you will. So don't just turn this off and say, ah, that doesn't bother me because you're going to find out that as we go through this, that so many of you are really in trouble with it. You know, think about, are you able to stay focused? Is your head clear? Do you start doing a project and all of a sudden your brain shifts that there's there's no capacity? Do you kind of wear out or you get up in the morning, you're sluggish, a rainy day comes and you feel like garbage? You know, your eyes are matted. You just, you know, sometimes you have word-finding problems. All of those things can be attributed to the high levels of mold and fungus. The side product, the, the, uh, the spin-off of this is mold has something called an aldehyde as a byproduct. Aldehyde is, is an alcohol. And it gets into your system and it can make you drunk. It makes you crazy. So if you're getting things that convert into sugar quickly or things that are fermented or eating things that have a lot of mold to them like peanuts and peanut butter and mushrooms and things of that nature and alcohol, you're going to be much more susceptible to it. And there are people because of their histories and the drugs that they've taken that are more susceptible. Think about the antibiotics, susceptibilities, right? If you've taken an antibiotic in your life, it has an effect not just where the infection happens to be in your throat or wherever it was that you took it from, but it's going to affect your entire body, particularly your digestive system. Your, well, your digestive system has to have these friendly bacteria, these guys that actually help you stay well. And if you put antibiotics in it and corticosteroids and so forth, they knock them out. They destroy them. And now the normal yeast... The mycelia yeast, these little one-cell yeast that we all have, by the way, by the time we're three months of age, that live symbiotically, means in compatibility to these bacterium that are there. Now what happens is they got the opportunity to start growing. And they go from a single cell, then they go into this mold form, then they go into a fungus stage, and then they get into your body, and they have roots, and they give off spores, and they get into your system, and they have the byproducts, and they start breaking down your whole immune system. Not a good thing. So the end products of symptom presentation, for example, you know, the the uh, incurable headaches that no matter what you do, just is always there, kind of dull. The uh, the fatigue, the depression, the irritability, the digestive disorders, the respiratory problems, the skin rashes, uh, and then you know to the to the genital urinary conditions that we see, all of these things seem to be recalcitrant. They just don't want to go away. 
So you have to look at this. And, you know, it was identified. I'm going to go back several years. There was a guy years ago by the name of Crook, William G. Crook. And he wrote a, a book called The Yeast Connection in Medical Breakthrough. And it was published in 1986. Uh, the book was a bestseller because everybody just kind of glommed onto this thing. And suddenly we're realizing that, as we've said, that there's so many of us that have problems because of our diets and because of our susceptibilities and because of the medications that we've taken over a period of time. Uh, candida grows and mold grows and fungus grows. And I don't want to get stuck on the word candida. I want you to think fungus and mold and yeast and so forth because candida is just one type. But it can be a factor in many things, including thyroid dysfunction, setting up an immune function problem. We're seeing tons of Hashimoto's thyroiditis today. This is an inflammatory autoimmune condition affecting the thyroid or the thyroid function. And uh, there's several physicians out there that are focusing simply just on that connection between the two. A while back, there was a, uh, a physician uh, by the name of... Uh, uh, Mary Showman and the, uh, I'm sorry, that was the, that was the patient. Anyway, the, they looked at this and it was she was an advocate, a patient advocate of uh, something called uh, an author of Living Well with Hypothyroidism. Some of this is coming off the top of my head, so my memory is trying to be jogged right now. And this uh, whole pathway, this is back in 2004, 2006 in that area, if I remember correctly, and found and got many physicians to get on the bandwagon and do the research that there is a connection between these things that we're talking about. Then you get back to the crazy people out there, as I'll call them. There's a guy by the name of Malcolm Blumenthal, a medical physician, who said there's no scientific data to support that candida is related to any of these symptoms that we're talking about. And this is the problem. You know, he's a professor of asthma and allergy protection. So if, if program, if, if I believe that, then all the stuff that I've done in my office and curing allergies and reactions and desensitizations and so forth would have never, ever worked. But we're going to get into this a little bit today and your questions as well and see if we can turn a new light on the subject and give you some very important uh, nutritional hints and some nutritional supplementation that may work that you can suggest to your doctors. I think that you're going to find it interesting, but remember, prescriptions don't work. The the uh, the local destruction of this stuff makes no sense because you have to turn the immune system around. It's in increasingly important to understand that a symptom is a symptom is a symptom, but there's an underlying reason why that is. We're here at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL, broadcasting to you from 105.9 FM and AM 630, as we do every Sunday at 12 noon, trying to give you the most informative place on the dial to get your health back, if you will. Put it on your calendar, October, or October the 20th. Our Ageless Health Seminar is coming up. You're not going to want to miss it this year. We're going to be talking about living well in a stressful world and all the tools that you need to make that happen. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. We are in studio on this kind of hazy day. Give me a call, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subject you have in mind. We're talking about yeast, mold, and fungus problems. Uh, guess what? It affects 80% of you and not just su superficial skin rashes and discharges, but in fact can cause gastrointestinal problems and muscular aches and pains and uh, PMS conditions and itchy ears and so forth. And most of you go on medication to get rid of it, but I'll tell you what, you don't get rid of it. And some, of, uh, some physicians have even stretched it to say that some of these manic problems that people suffer from also can be connected to this. It's a difficult diagnosis, except for us, because we do it the right way, but uh, candida-related uh, problems are, for most traditional physicians, they don't know where to start. There's actually a lot of testing. There's a lot of uh, antibody reaction testing that you can do. The, the fact that a lot of doctors out there have different methods of testing, and subsequently it, it breeds the skepticism about is, is really candida overgrowth a bona fide health problem. Well, let me tell you, after 35 years of practice, I'm here to say to you it is, and if you get rid of it and you handle it properly, uh, 
life changes and changes dramatically. This is something that that we focused on years ago because we knew how bad it was. And But if you've been taking antibiotics or steroids or your diet's been really garbage for a lot of years and you, you know that you've been struggling and suffering and no matter what happens and you go back and take the, method, uh, the medications, well, guess what? There's a better way of getting it done and you really need to know how this works. We talked about Dr. Uh, Crook years ago in his book, The Yeast Connection, but it's the truth of it is, it is a very difficult for most physicians condition and used, uh, used to go after patients by just simply doing this. You, you would eliminate things and if the patient got better, then you knew that you were on the right track. And if they didn't get better, then you knew you were on the wrong track. But we're much more efficient than that now. And not only can you have a candida overgrowth causing uh, systemic toxic reactions, but you also can be allergic to mold and fungus. Many of you right now, with the weather being what it is, with the allergies being out there that are kind of bombarding you because spring came so quickly, you're dying from mold exposure, not so much even the pollens, but the mold and the fungus that's out there. And unless you're willing to do something about it, you're stuck to all the the medications and the steroids and the garbage that your your docs are giving you. And we're going to talk about how to fix that. Coming up after the the break at the bottom of the hour, uh, we will have a very special guest online with us, a very dear friend of mine, somebody, by the way, who I'm traveling to China with. Uh, you've heard him on Dr. Tom Rizal Live before, Dr. Evan Mladenov from Kansas City. And Dr. Mladenov is one of those great intellects of the world. He's an amazing human being. He was a doc for the Kansas City T- uh, Chiefs for 12 years, uh, practices uh, with uh, a small practice with his daughter and, and some very selected people. And they do some amazing things. But we're going to get him on. He wrote a book, by the way, Stressed Out, Headed for Burnout, or Burnout Headed, you know. It's uh, it's a great book. Go online. You can get it through our office, by the way. And if you know if you're, if you're suffering from adrenal impairment and you don't know which way to go, this book will give you a tremendous amount of insights on how to fix that, how to change that. But Dr. Evan Mladenoff will be my guest in about, oh, 10 minutes or so. We're going to get him. We're going to have him hooked up here and, and uh, ready to rock and roll. Sometimes it's fun to have him in studio because I never know what to expect from him, but this time we're going to have him on the phone. That way I can get rid of him if I want to, to but we won't tell him that. Talking about candida and fungus problems, uh, and we're going to ask Dr. Mladenov his experience with that, so make sure you give us a call at 888 Candida supplementation, when you go from the natural realm, is one of those bailiwicks that you know a lot of people really don't know how to apply. I mean, a lot of things work, like black walnut and crupillic acid and coconut oil and uh, DG, uh, DGL, which is uh, deglycerinated licorice and uh, garlic and grapeseed extract, and the list goes on, and powdery arco, by the way. But if you really don't know how to clear the playing field first, meaning if you don't know how to get the terrain to quit being susceptible to this, you don't get... The, the junk out that's feeding it, the mold and the fungus and the dairy products and the cheeses and all those things that were susceptible and get the body to quiet itself down, then no matter what you use, it's not going to go away. No matter what you use, it's not going to go away. Prescription medications and many anti, uh, candida uh, uh, pharmaceuticals just don't work because they put too much of a burden on the body. They tax the system far too much. And the end product of what they do is is deadly, if not worse, than finding a real way of of uh, you know ignoring this. So if you ignore it, you don't you still have the problem. And if you use the drugs, you're still going to get the problem because it's not going to go away. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You're listening, to Dr. Tom Rizal, live. I am in studio at triple eight six three zero nine six two five. That's triple eight six three zero WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subject you have in mind. We're talking about a. Epidemic, a silent one, something that affects, some authors say, up to 80% of us, mold and fungus problems and the side events of that with some really nasty outcomes. Have a, a doctor on hold, a good friend, uh, expert in a lot of different areas, Dr. Evan Mladenov from Kansas City. We're going to talk a little bit about this condition together. And, you know, before we get to Dr. Mladenov, I want to tell you about something that came out uh, in one of the journals recently, and it's about... Uh, 
Alzheimer's disease, and so many of us are afraid that's going to hit us. Well, this is not so much the detection, which the article had some of that in, the early detection of Alzheimer's, but something that really caught my attention that I'd heard about, and it's really being positioned, and that's the reversal of Alzheimer's disease using coconut oil. And we're going to get into that, and I mean reversal. So I'm going to do the the homework, and I'm going to let you know about it, and uh, in the next week or two or three, we're going to talk about that extensively. But meanwhile, let me get my dear friend, Dr. Mladenov, on the uh, the air here. Dr. Evan, are you with me? Dr. Evan? Dr. Evan? Well, he's hanging out there someplace. We're gonna, we, the, the light is on. I know he's there. But we'll get to him as soon as they can tell me that they can find him on the board, because otherwise he's going to be really upset. He's one of these guys. You know, you promise him a spotlight, and then you take it away from him, and hit, all kinds of things happen. But mold and fungus problems are one of these epidemic situations, and we need to put that together in a position that you know what to do with them. So let's say that you're, you're, you're suffering with some of the symptoms that we talked about, that you're suffering with the headaches and the gastrointestinal problems, and you know you even have, you open your mouth and there's this white stuff there, that you, your body aches all the time, and nobody's been able to tell you what to do about it. Well, guess what? This, there's a step. There's a way of getting that done. First of all, if you open your mouth and you look in the mirror, your tongue should be pink with a little bit of saliva coat over the top of it. Your tongue should not look black. It shouldn't look white. It shouldn't look like you got this thick coat of anything. And if that's not the deal, then you know you may have a problem with candida. Let's go back to the phones and let's see if we can find my dear friend. Dr. Evan, are you there yet? Dr. Evan. I don't know, Rick. We can't find him today. We're going we're gonna to see where he is, and maybe we'll have him call in the main line and see we pick him up that way. Let's go to the phones, though. Rita, are you there? Hi, Rita. Um, I just want to know where you practice and if you take new patients. I practice in Fairfax, just off the National Capital Beltway, about a half a mile off of uh, Exit 50 Arlington Boulevard. And I do see some new patients, but fortunately I'm blessed with a great team that's with me. Uh, I've got five docs who are very capable in all kinds of areas, So, and we usually uh, co-treat patients. So uh, you can call in and either go to the website at rosalcare.com or go to uh, 703-698-7117, and let's see what we can do for you. Okay, that was 703 Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for calling, Rita. Thank you. 888 You know, that's a problem. Sometimes just trying to get in to see me is a is very difficult challenge, but... We will do our best, but I have some brilliant, brilliant doctors. They sometimes make me look like I'm the schlep in the in the group, but they're they're really amazing, and we work together as a team, and we grand rounds as much as we possibly can grand rounds. We're talking about that malady, that mystery malady, mold and fungus, but let's talk about treating it, and let's talk about what you can do about putting all of this together. If you have a problem, if you have mold and fungus conditions, then we need to do several things. One, we've got to starve the problem. That means take away all those things that are going to cause you to grow it more. What's that? Dairy of any kind, alcohol of any kind, sugar of any kind, fermented foods, things that are mold, mushrooms and fungus types of things. Try to control your environment. So many of us live in a very moldy fungus uh, uh, environmental area and it makes it much more difficult for us. So we're going to talk about that with Dr. Mladenov, and we're going to uh, see if we can fix your condition. Dr. Evan, are you there? I'm here. Ah, finally, finally, I hear the voice from Kansas. Welcome, my friend. I hear everything that was going on, but I couldn't talk. You couldn't Imagine talk. That. Uh, you know, that that all by itself is, you know, the side of a miracle, right? Yes. So... Anyway, I'm glad that you're here. I'm sorry that I woke you up on a Sunday morning. I know that you like to get your beauty sleep. But nevertheless, we have a topic called uh, mold fungus and candida problems. And we're uh, telling our audience that about 80% of uh, Americans are thought to have some level of mold and fungus causing all kinds of problems from, you know, just a localized uh, skin rash, but from GI problems and uh, androgen problems and headaches and uh, you name it, it shows up, even impotency and so forth. So... What I, I know that you deal with it as much as I do. I mean, it's one of those things that walk into our, our office, obviously, with almost every patient. How much of this condition 
is an underlying triggering mechanism, if you will, a predisposition or predisposing factor to all the other things that we see? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, it's huge. And, and here is, you know, my biggest fear on this, and that is, um, you know, patients must exercise their God-given right to say no. And here's what I mean by that. You know, they, they, they get a problem, they go to their doctor, and in good conscience or political or muddy motivated or big pharma motivated, the doctor writes them a prescription for an antibiotic. And so, so let's move that off the table. The question is, is the antibiotic the right thing to do? And what started as an honorable quest to eradicate disease has now miserably gone wrong because now antibiotics don't work when, this, when they need to work. But what has happened is that this, the, the body has a be, delicate teeter-totter that now yeast begins to grow out of control because the good guys have been wiped out along with the bad guys, and so now yeast just does whatever the heck it wants. Um, and then the other big thing is that patients say, oh, uh, the doctor put me on an antibiotic. I better take some probiotics to counteract that. And, and again, that's a noble cause, but the bottom line is if you're under stress and you're secreting cortisol, it kills all the good bacteria, so now you have leaky gut syndrome, which I'm sure you've touched upon. It's like taking, so, it's taking, it's like taking good stuff and throwing it down the drain. There's, there's no yeah, holding power. Exactly, exactly. And, and so here's, here's what I counsel patients, Dr. Rose, on that is, you know, it's impossible for you to get an infection of any kind unless you have three things present. You must have all three things. Number one, you must have a compromised immune system. Number two, you must have a suitable environment. Bugs do not grow in the ocean. They grow in the swamp. And then number three, you have to get exposed to the bug. you got to have all three of those things. You can't just have the bug and have the other two not there. So to fix the patient, you have to fix all three things. And you have to fix the, the first two before you fix the last one. Well, I mean, you're absolutely right. And here's what, you know, when you leave, let me ask you a question, because here's what I say to patients. When you uh, are done with the show today, how are you going to get home? In the car. No, you're not. <laughs> well, first you have to take off the headset. Then you have to stand up. Then you have to say goodbye to your administrative and technical team there. Then you have to open the door of the studio. Then you have to walk out the door, walk in. See, you forgot all those hundred little steps to get you to your car door. And guess what? If you miss one of those steps or you do it in the wrong order, you're not going home. That's true. And the same, and the same is true of the body is that you but you got to do things in the right order. So just taking antibiotics to kill the problem and then taking good probiotics to fix it is like, okay, that's the wrong order. You're trying to put the key in the door and you're still in the studio three blocks away from your car. It's not going to work. So we have to we have to support every mechanism of the body to uh, to turn anything around, no matter what the condition is, including this one yeah. that we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, it's like here's what people and doctors don't understand. When you get... Uh, an infection, or you have yeast problems. It's not just you know in your left toenail. It's your whole body that reacts, even though the the organism might be located in just your you know big toe well, the or wherever it might be. The interesting thing, and most people don't understand, is that the byproduct, the, that thing that leaks into the system initially with mold and fungus when it's starting to grow pretty heavily, is alcohol, aldehyde. And yes. that's what uh, starts dampening the nervous system and causes reactions similar to somebody having a hangover or being drunk. That, that dull headache, that lethargy, that inability to function, that muscular ache and weakness that some people get after they've had too many the night before. Same thing with mold and fungus. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, here's what, what these people do. is They self-medicate themselves with alcohol. And guess what? They feel better while they're taking the alcohol, but the next morning they feel worse because they've given fuel to the organisms to grow even more. And so then, you know, the, they can get in this vicious cycle where they can become dependent on alcohol as a drug of choice. We're going to take a couple phone calls while you're on the line. We'll, we'll answer them together. Several people that have been holding, I'd like to get to uh, one or two of them. Uh, John, thank you for calling. How can I help you, sir? Hi, this is John uh, Arlington. Yes, sir. Uh, I've got a, a condition with gout that has kind of spread throughout my body and I've got little little crystals here and there in uh, in like uh, circular little little sores or whatever and um, it's it worries me because I 
I feel like I'm being used as a host for some kind of critter. I don't know. Well, let me let me tell you a little bit of something about gout, John, because it's it's important that you understand it. Gout is the is the end product, the formation of uh, crystals, uric acid crystals that come from the uh, byproduct, if you will, of excess of purity and metabolism. It's a liver problem. And when the liver is not working the way it's supposed to, these gaudy crystals get formed and they get into the system. They go to the joint spaces and they begin to tear up the joints. It's painful. The joints can swell uh, and the, the joints can uh, then begin to degenerate. It usually starts in the big toe, and the reason that it starts in the big toe, John, is because that's the beginning place for the acupuncture meridian called liver. Liver one is on the big toe. So you, in Chinese uh, medicine, in traditional Chinese medicine, they're going to tell you there's a stagnation of the energy flow. There's a stagnation of qi uh, in the big toe. So uh, you have to look to the liver, and you have to change dietary patterns. Excess of meat consumption, a lot of uh, fried foods, a lot of toxins, allergy reactions, uh, all those things have to be eliminated and you can begin to make a difference. Cherry juice, particularly black ox heart cherries, will help eliminate the symptoms of gout if it hasn't gone too far. Ledum polester is a homeopathic that works very, very well. So you can try those things, but you've got to change the dietary patterns. You've got to look at the medications that you're taking. And most importantly, you must drink water. If you don't drink water, your risk of developing gout increases. You have to drink at least a cup of water every hour. Put a little lemon juice in it, and that'll help. John, we'll get back to you again. I appreciate it. Thank you for the call. And how can I help you? Because my daughter has a pulmonary problem with mold. Um, she thinks she got it when she was cleaning her basement. And um, she does have asthma. And as far as I know, I don't know what other medication she's on, but I know she's on prednisone. Just wondered if you had any suggestions. Oh, I have a lot of suggestions. Dr. Mladenoff, are you there? I think I'm here. Okay, I think you are too. I'm sorry that we lost you, but uh, did you hear Ann's question? Yes, I did. Would you like uh, to respond? Yes, absolutely. Um, y- you know, prednisone is a very powerful drug, um, and now uh, we're we're all watching the basketball, uh, you know, March Madness. So if your star guy gets hurt um, and he's on the bench. And the guy that comes in to take his place does really well. What happens to the star, star guy? The coach says, okay, sit down and have a rest. Well, well, that's what kind of happens when you take prednisone. It might come in and save the day and suppress symptoms, but it also tells other parts of the body to stop working because it's got enough of that star quality, if you will. So part of the problem is that when you suppress symptoms, there's always a cost, and the cost is deterioration of other parts of your body. So she's probably ha- has a myriad of things going on, and so I would start asking her questions. And the question is, does she have low back pain? Does she have pain on the inside of her knee? Do bright lights bother her eyes? Does she prefer and crave salty food? Does she get dizzy if she stands up too fast? Do all those things are symptoms of her stress system or her adrenal glands not doing their job, and it could be because the prednisone is suppressing that function, or there could be other reasons also. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We're here broadcasting from 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. This is the place that you call in and find out how to fix anything from a natural point of view, without drugs, without surgery, every Sunday at 12 noon. Online, very dear friend, a colleague, someone who I admire far more than anybody else on the planet, Dr. Evan Mladenov. Evan, are you still there? I'm still here. Let's see if we can get back to Ann. We only have a couple minutes and the program's over. The problem with this show is it's way too short. Ann, are you still there? Okay, I'm still here. Thank you for holding. Talking about, you know, your uh, the problem with the corticosteroids and the mold and the fungus problems, as Dr. Mladenov was, uh, was saying earlier, the problem is, is that the steroids are going to knock out your daughter's uh, immune system so she can't recover by herself, so she's stuck. The longer that you go with steroids, the worse the problem becomes. So it's like using a muscle. You know, if you don't use it, you've got nothing to, uh, to fight with afterwards. Uh, the problem is, is that it's going to rebound 
a insulin sugar response in the body, and uh, once you come off the steroids, it actually makes the problem much worse. So there's ways of fixing that, but you have to approach it from looking at every angle that you possibly can. So, and I know that it's it's uh, it's a quick answer, but if you go to our website, go to roselcare.com, I can be more specific for you and try to ha- help you as uh, as best we possibly can. Dr. Evan, we've got about two minutes, and I want to talk a little bit about something that you and I have that's extremely exciting that's coming up in May. We're going to China, and we are going to learn from some very wonderful people. We are. This is going to be uh, an adventure of a lifetime where we can go and commiserate with the ancients uh, and, and see where history was actually created. It's going to be magnificent. It's, uh, I'm looking forward. We're also going to be involved in a uh, integrative care conference symposium that's going to be held there as well. I guess it's uh, two, three days while we're there, and we get to ask questions and participate a little bit. Yes, absolutely. And, and I actually, I just found out last night uh, from the uh, the coordinator that we are going to be going. Uh, we have a side trip to a, uh, a hospital uh, where we're going to see uh, firsthand, not just from theoretical models, but we're going to see firsthand uh, the integration of. Uh, acupuncture in a surgical setting and uh, acupuncture in recovery from surgery and uh, and a whole host of different things. So that's that's an added bonus that we're going to get uh, after this big international symposium. I'm I'm so excited I can't even stand. I'm like a kid looking forward to Christmas. This has been a goal of mine for many many years. I'm glad, but you know so and the the benefit is I get to uh, have you for uh, you know ten days and pick your brain. So it's that's well, going to be more fun. Be fun, but but have you have you have, do you have the answer to my question? I I asked Dr. Tom, why at the coronation of the emperor did they say, may you reign 10,000 years? And do you have the answer yet? No, I haven't, because you t- I, the answer I gave you told me I was wrong. Well, yeah, you just said they were very optimistic, and that may be true. But uh, a historical point, there are 9,999 rooms in the Forbidden City, which means if the emperor was going to spend a day in each room, he'd have to live 10,000 years. <laughs> a man of very, very... Unbelievable factual information. We won't go That's in. That's pretty cool, huh? Yes, it is. There's some other things, but uh, that I'd ask you as well to share, but not on the air. <laughs> okay, Evan. Thanks for f- for your time. I'll talk to you soon. And uh, okay, thank you. We'll have you back again. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye bye. Bye now, Dr. Evan Mladenov, Kansas City. His book. Stressed out, headed for burnout. Uh, it's available. You can get it through our office. Uh, brilliant, brilliant practitioner. Dr. Evan is uh, is one of these guys that through the course of the many years that he's been in practice, answers the question, why is that? Probably more effectively than many people I've ever met. He is uh, a delightful human being and a tribute to the integrative care community. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We are here every Sunday and trying to bring you the most updated information. Don't go away. Stay with us. Tell your friends about us. Go to RizalCare.com. See you next week. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. Bye.